All right, uh, welcome to a special installment of the show. Today we're going to highlight uh, for the first time a different time period. Uh, this is for my 18th century figures. I just started collecting 18th century and painting them uh, this year uh, in 2022. Uh, well, Perhaps I started, well, I started a little before 2022, the very end of 2021, but I, I finished the project uh, in 2022 in preparation for my surgery. I wanted to um, paint something uh, new and fresh that was going to motivate me, highly colorful. I wanted something in a new uh, either scale or time period, and I ended up selecting AWY uh, because I wanted to stretch myself a little bit um, um, in, in painting and get something a little out of the norm for what I had been doing. Uh, and I also wanted to use up some figures that I had sitting around. And in this case, I had a few boxes of Perry miniatures, uh, AWY uh, Continentals, uh, that needed some paint. And I'm so glad that I did this little exploration. It was fun. So without further ado, I'll get into the miniatures. Uh, so first up, we have, again from Perry Miniatures, um, a unit of Marines. So they, um, they are painted um, in uh, a more traditional style for a Marine. Uh, I believe this is the uniforms uh, up till 770, 1777. Um, I plan to use these in a game um, around Bernard Cornwell's book, The Fort, which was really a fun read. So uh, who, doesn't, who doesn't need a little bit of variety with a unit like this? They can also be fielded in a pinch as um, a unit from Connecticut, because um, Connecticut uh, use these hats sometimes. They've got a really distinctive look to it. Maybe this type of hat is not something that you would associate with the um, Revolution, uh, Revolutionary War, as you might commonly hear it, or AWY. Um, but actually, surprisingly, uh, this hat is the appropriate hat for a lot of different regiments um, and for Marines. Also, for both Connecticut and for Marine service, you'll notice that um, we've got folks here um, from different ethnic backgrounds, and that would have been um, a, a correct representation. And in this case, might have even gone light on it. Um, I probably could have had a little more variation than I'm showing here um, because of... Uh, especially the Marine Service. All right, um, for basing, I should mention, I use Vallejo's Dark Earth with a, a quick dry brush and then Tajima One um, uh, Grass Tufts. Um, as you'll know and as you'll see in this Grass Tufts, I probably used a little bit more variety than I should have, but um, I just went a little crazy applying them. I did apply them the day after my surgery while heavily medicated. Um, I finished painting the day before my surgery. Um, all right, next unit. Uh, movement trays I've actually had for 10 years sitting around in a box. Um, this was a use for them. Uh, something completely different, going away from Perry for a moment. These are from Warlord. Um, and, you know, not just Warlord, right, is the name of the series. Um, but, of course, we're going to have some Warlord in anything we do, um, just because uh, they're just so ubiquitous. Um, these are Militia. Um, I, I did them pretty standard. I've got a Perry Commander mixed in there. Um, a, a, you know, a guy with some experience from the French and Indian War back here. I could use these guys as um, civilians. I could also use them as French and Indian War uh, Militia in a pinch. Um, the, only, the only thing really special I did with this kit at all was um, I added in a preacher. Uh, I took some of the parts that looked a little preachery, made them up black and white and gave them that frock. It's uh, just a piece of plastic card that I cut up to, to make that. Um, all right, we're not gonna spend too long on these guys. Move on to the next couple of units. All right, next up we have a Massachusetts regiment forget the exact regiment number you'll, you'll forgive me for forgetting and you also see that I have mixed in here some artillery crew um, I I can use them uh, in a pinch as uh, what I'm doing here um, or more appropriately I keep them with a cannon um, I have in this case uh, you know again following a little bit of variation in skin tones not too much, um, but you see the standard bearer has some variation, um, as well as a couple of the infantrymen. 
Um, these are meant to be a Massachusetts regiment with kind of standard colors. Um, and in the back, we have Massachusetts artil State Artillerymen um, in their traditional colors. I also have a, uh, a State Artillery uh, Commander, which I'll show off when I show off the, the small cannon that we have. Um, I used a banner here. Um, see back there that's showing the lone pine tree. Um, this uh, may be appropriate for uh, a battle like Bunker Hill um, and is uh, certainly evokes uh, New England and Massachusetts in general. Um, I did a little bit of research uh, here, but nowhere near as much as I do for ancients because AWI is interesting to me, but it just doesn't capture me quite as much. Um, so I'm cheating a little bit on the research angle. Uh, I'll show really quickly, a piece of artillery, comes off the Warlord kit, really great kit, easy to put together, easy to paint up. Um, you know, Commander from Perry that I threw in there as well. Um, not a lot to say there. That sprue has some cool stuff on it and you'd be surprised at how much mileage you get out of it. Comes with uh, four artillerymen, the actual artillery piece. Um, this woman who's meant to be um, a, uh, you know, the wife of a fallen artilleryman who, who jumps in there to save the day and continue at her husband's post. Um, I think her name was Molly Pitcher. Um, may have been a real person, may have been a myth, I'm not so sure, or may have been propaganda, I'm not so sure which. Um, but uh, it's a pretty cool story nonetheless, and I think there are some other women who um, you know, served in combat roles in uh, AWI um, that, that really don't get a ton of recognition. Um, but it was really cool to see a figure done up that way. It also comes with a commander model that can be done in a lot of different ways. In this case, I kind of wanted them to be suitable as um, any of the commanders of the day, but I think of them as an early war um, uh, George Washington. Um, I, I didn't research what color horses was or anything like that. I just went with something I thought looked cool. Um, but for uh, an artillery uh, piece to come with a commander model like this, it's just very convenient because you say to yourself, what do I need when I'm building an army? I'm going to need a couple of boxes of these uh, infantrymen, and then I'm going to need some artillery. And for the artillery to come with that commander that typically you have to go off and get a separate uh, metal kit for is just Really great use of sprue real estate. And I, I was happy to see that. Um, next up, I'm gonna show a very tiny unit. These are riflemen. Uh, not a ton to say here. I think um, typically early war, you would see these kind of hunting shirts and more units than I have set up that way. I've only got a very few sparing guys in hunting shirts. I also have here um, uh, one of the heroes of Saratoga. Uh, and I believe um, the capture of Ticonderoga as well um, in his classic white and red uh, hunting attire. So um, this is a pretty cool, pretty cool model that I put together from the Warlord Militia Kit. These are from the Perry Continental Infantry Sprues that, that come with a couple of huntsmen. You can also get them as separate sprues from Perry. So Perry's pretty cool in that they sell a lot of their sprues as separate. Um, and they've got some pretty um, characterful things, like a guy holding a, a small pipe. It's pretty cool. I like these guys. Um, and again, I feel them as riflemen, um, and I didn't take a lot of care in picking out their guns. I think some of those are muskets, but uh, nobody's going to notice, and it really doesn't bother me, um, based on my knowledge of the time period. If I knew more about the time period, it would probably bother me, and I'd lose sleep. Um, okay. These are some more guys appropriate for Bunker Hill time period. Um, although in this case, I would probably use them in something like um, Saratoga. Uh, and this is a unit from New England. Um, technically, a lot of people would think of them as Massachusetts, um, but they're actually uh, conscripted from the area or, or raised from the area that today is the state of Maine. Um, this would be Phineas's, Phineas's re uh, regiment. Um, which I believe was pulled from Cumberland, York counties um, in southern Maine. Um, and I, I lived in Maine for a long time, and I, I thought it would be really great to use a regiment like this. Um, based on the colors, you know, that brown and red, it can actually be used for a lot of different things. Um, and, and not just this one. Um, the cool thing about um, 
the color choices I, I chose for these, these um, regimental um, colors is that they can be used uh, depending on the battle as, as different things with, again, nobody really noticing. Um, Drummer Boy is, uh, is set up with the reverse colors uh, on the jacket and trim, um, or the facings, I think they're called. I don't love the way he came out, um, but um, this is the, the last project I did before surgery, and it's too late now. Um, I'll be able to maybe paint something up uh, in a few more weeks. And again, we have some variation of skin tone. Um, these models um, do relatively well in that regard. Um, I thought they take. I thought they took the different skin shades pretty nicely. And again. Um, I'm probably underrepresenting the variations that you would have seen. Although, if you watch a documentary, or watch a movie, you would think that everybody um, was, you know, fresh off the boat from England um, in these conflicts, and that's absolutely uh, not the case. Uh, okay, a few more models to show off, uh, and we have now we're going into models that I use for silver bayonet, and for me, silver bayonet is this slightly fantasy version reimagining of North America that blends French and Indian War and America War for Independence together. Um, and I use some of these models in um, AWI historical games, as well as for Silver Bayonet, which is a really great skirmish game, kind of like Frostgrave with muskets. Um, and I, I, I also use them for uh, muskets and tomahawks, which is uh, the uh, a game from the makers of Saga, uh, which is a cool little I think they're French speaking Canadian company. Um, anyways, let's let's jump in. We've got George Washington himself. This comes from I ordered these from North Star Miniatures. This is from the Heroes and Miniature range. I believe they did in partnership with uh, War Games Illustrated. Um, I tried to use kind of the look of Washington from the Crossing. Uh, you know, the famous river crossing painting um, as he's going across, I believe, on uh, Christmas Eve, something like that, um, to go uh, take over a Hessian um, uh, barracks. Um, but I didn't stick 100% to it. I should have put in a little more yellow there. I did keep the red as the lining for the cloak, which you see a lot of times, and I did keep the um, uh, buffalo color. Uh, for the um, the the legs and, and buff coat, um, so uh, I really really love this miniature. Could have spent more time painting him, but I'm I'm pretty happy with the results. I use him as the commander for my AWI um, silver bayonet. Um, here is McTavish. Um, this is a Highlander um, who is time period is a little bit off. You can tell by looking at his pistol. Also is his bonnet. Um, he's really more appropriate, I think, for Jacobite um, Rebellion kind of time period or, or just after um, or for French and Indian War. Um, but it was really fun to put him together. He's got those kind of stockings. I'm not sure what they're called. He's got a, uh, a plaid kilt as well. Um, this was a miniature that I'm not sure if you can buy it individually. It's a Warlord miniature that came um, with... Um, uh, I believe pike and shot or or with black powder um, when you pre-order, um, which I did many years, many years ago. Um, it's nice to have a use for that model. Uh, next up we have, uh, this is one of my favorites, Dr. Nickenbacher. He is a doctor from the range um, that uh, North Star sells that supports a game called Dead Man's Hand. Um, I thought that even though the time period's a little bit off, he works pretty well in my own fantasy reimagining of 18th century North America. He's got kind of a cleaver on there. He's got some forceps and some scalpels, just cool stuff. Um, I will eventually put a little blood on him as well because you see him washing his hands. You know, it only makes sense for there to be blood on his apron and uh, that kerchief, but uh, I haven't done it yet. I was planning to do it after I sealed him, which I've done. Um, but I'm going to go in there and do that eventually. I really, in particular, like the way that they did. There we go. I really like the way they did his facial hair. I just think he's got a lot of character. And you can imagine him kind of talking through that mustache. Um, I, I, I love him. Another one from that same range. Um, I use this guy as a French trapper. 
Now you see from the belt, belt buckle, it's US issue. This would be more, I think, the time period of something like uh, Dances with Wolves. Um, but, and, and again, you know, you see that pistol inside of that holster that does definitely does not look 18th century. But that's okay with me. I, I don't mind at all. I think he works fine. Um, uh, and I, I use him using the um, stats for a sapper. Um, as a sapper can come with a um, two-handed weapon because I think a lot of the think of a sapper in Napoleonic times they might have like a, a maul an axe or a pickaxe something like that um, so pretty cool model I love the beard too um, next up you know we'll do one more from that range um, this is you know again does not look 18th century um, this is a uh, uh, a member like a, um, a medicine man type member of a western tribe forget exactly wh which um, but you may think of him as looking like uh, and I'm not an expert here but this may be more of a Navajo looking um, uh, tribe member I'm like really I don't know um, but I wanted to put in some color um, he's got a either captured or traded coat um, and then more traditional dress uh, underneath He's older, so I gave him that white hair. Um, I didn't really do any beadwork on his uh, shoulder satchel. Um, I, I could have, uh, I just, I was running out of time to finish this project and wanted to paint him up. I still made sure to get a lot of color in there, but I didn't get any in the beadwork. So those are kind of just bone beads. Um, he has a, a neck, kind of a choker on as well. Just a really cool detail. Um, I, I love this range. It's meant more for 19th century but can't all be perfect forgot to show this one off this i use as a counter for um either um, some of these games you have a certain number of kind of I think of them as like elan points that you can spend or sometimes you have a tallying um, victory points i just use this little dice holder with casually to track those sorts of things really depends on what on different games what i use it for it can also be a turn marker for measuring top and bottom of turns. Okay, next up, we're going back into Warlord. Um, and actually, I think these are all Warlord or Warlord subsidiaries. So um, I believe here, I hope I'm not mistaken, I believe here we have a Magua um, from Warlord's range to support um, French and Indian War. Um, he's not my Magua. My Magua comes from uh, Footsore Miniatures. I'm just using this guy as a Huron warrior. Um, he's got the uh, doe skin breeches, uh, and he's, you know, you can imagine him yelling uh, uh, loudly, giving a whooping cry. He's got a little bit of uh, red uh, paint. Um, I, I went for like a handprint there. It didn't, didn't really show off well, but that's okay. So we're kind of quick models for my uh, native um, contingent. Um, they, they've really formed their own war band. A warrior from Mythic Americas. Um, this is one of their, I'm not sure if it's Warlord proper or subsidiary, but Mythic Americas is, you know, kind of kind of fits the bill of, of what I'm putting together here, which is kind of Mythic 18th century. Um, I think they fit in pretty nicely, although they are certainly designed for an older time period, but I like him. He's got a war club. He's, he's got the, the doeskin uh, breeches. He's got um, this cool little, I don't know if it's sheepskin, wolfskin, something over one of his thighs. And he's got uh, a mohawk and some feathers uh, uh, coming off it. Pretty cool looking guy. I gave him, um, you know, just black stripes down the face and down all the way to his chin. Um, just kind of a little detail I did with a micro pen. Uh, next up from that same range. Now this guy, this is not likely not someone... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that anybody would have um, shown up in the French and Indian War dressed quite like this. Um, it, this would be a later period, and you can tell by the hatchet, this would be a later period Plains um, tribesman, I believe. And by the way, in this video, I've probably said Indian many times. I know that's not preferred terminology. I, I apologize. But what I mean is indig indigenous North Americans, um, although only indigenous for 10,000 years. So everybody everybody came from somewhere um next up another one of these warriors 
Um, I like the way his face paint came off. I put bronze on these rings. They likely would have been something different material, but I thought it was fun to do it that way. And then he's got these kind of bear claws around his neck. Again, with the breeches, I gave him some check pattern down at the bottom, kind of fun to do. Um, not a lot to say there. And the last one here, this was a, and I love when Warlord does this. This is a Warlord special edition model. Comes when you pre-order, oh, I think it's called This Bloody Ground or something to that effect. But it is a side book to go with black powder that specifically covers French and Indian War. Um, uh, it might be dark and bloody ground. Um, I, I've actually never played black powder at this scale. I play black powder at six millimeter, um, but this miniature, I've been just looking for a, an excuse to use him for so long. And so he's the leader of my small um, native war band. He has a either captured or traded uh, British coat um, with a little bit of anachro anachronistic facings, although I'm sure you can find white and red pretty easily. Uh, on some some regiment. Um, he's on this large rock, which really gives him some impressive height. One of the things I noticed about this character is even though he's on the rock and leaning down, he is not 28 millimeter. He's like, I don't know, 32 millimeter. He's a big boy. Now, he's about the same height as this 28 millimeter model that's also made by Warlord in the same exact range. Yeah, he's pretty much the same height as him. Now imagine if he was standing up straight, because this is the same height as him leaning over. Um, if he was standing up straight, he would he would be like a full half a head to a full head taller than this guy, which, sure, you know, that happens. People are different heights. I'm a different height than most people, but um, this guy feels a little out of scale. That said, as a leader of a war band, which he is, and we'll see if we can get his war band in focus, um, I think he does the, does the trick of looking imposing. Um, this guy with a headdress looks pretty imposing as well, and he's um, the second in command and really the combat specialist of the group. Um, all right, wow. 22 minutes to talk about Silver Bayonet and Black Powder. Uh, mission accomplished. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this showcase. Uh, miniatures were by Perry, uh, Warlord, North Star, and uh, I think that's it. You know, this is uh, not a lot of variety here in ranges, but man, there's a lot of variety in color and what you can do with these models. Really fun project. All right, well, thank you. And I'll speak to you all soon.